my name is Alyssa from Alyssa Threads and I am one of the Nomi designers and today we get to sew my fall design ME2057. I'm so excited about this pattern. If you guys have seen my last designs, you know that this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. I love sewing ruffles and frills and puff sleeves. And this doesn't have any of that, but I'm so glad that I stepped outside of my comfort zone and designed something a little bit different because I love how this turned out. This jacket has two different options. You can either do a high collar, which is what we're gonna sew today, or you can do a hood option. The great thing about this pattern is you can sew it in so many different fabrics. I chose to do mine with a little bit of a quilted vibe, but you could do denim, which I think would be so cute, or corduroy for the winter. Like there's so many different fabrics that you can sew this jacket with, and I think that's my favorite part of it. A few more details that I love about this jacket. You only need a separating zipper for your notions, and it has a curved hem, and it has welt pockets, which I think are such a cute detail. But if you don't want to sew the welt pockets, that's totally fine because it also comes with these patch pockets and you can move them down, you can take them off. It's totally customizable and that's one thing that I really love about this jacket. I really hope that you guys love this pattern as much as I do and let's get to sewing. Okay, let's take a closer look at the pattern. It comes in sizes four through 12 in one envelope and then in the other it's 14 through 22. So be mindful of that when you're buying your pattern. Um, just know that it doesn't come in all of these sizes in one envelope. You're gonna have to get a separate envelope for whichever size you that you wanna sew. Today we're gonna be sewing view A, and which is the high collar and view B is the hood version. And on the back, it's gonna tell you which fabrics to use. Um, it says corduroy, cotton blends, denim, flannel, linen blends, micro suede, pre-quilted fabric, tweed, and wool blends. And then for the lining, it's gonna be cotton blends, polyester blends, and then for the interfacing, it's just gonna be lightweight, fusible interfacing. And then for the notions for both view A and B, you're gonna need a separating zipper and that's it for the notions, which is really nice. And then when you're choosing your size, I always base my size off of my largest measurement, which is my bust. Um, so you're gonna look here for which size you fall into. And also just be mindful that um, your pattern size is not the same as your ready to wear size. It's gonna be a little bit different. So if you normally wear a size 14, at a big box store, um, you're probably not gonna wear the same size on the pattern envelope. So just double check that before jumping in and cutting your piece. Okay, so like I said, the only notion you're gonna need is a zipper and I've got my separating zipper here. I'm gonna set that aside and then we're gonna go through all of the pattern pieces. Okay, now we're gonna go through all the pattern pieces. This is piece one and this is the front. And it also has the welt markings here. And this jacket is really nice because if you don't wanna do the welt pockets, you can just take the um, upper pocket that is gonna be sewn up here and you can just put it down here too, which I think is gonna be really cute. And I'll probably do that in the future when I'm sewing it. But this is also your upper pocket and that's gonna be placed up here. And then for piece three, we have the welt pocket, and that's gonna be if you're sewing this pocket down here. And these are also for the welt pockets as well. Pieces four and five, these are the pocket lining. And then piece six is the back. Piece seven is the back, the yoke back. So that'll be the top up here. And then if you're sewing the hood, you'll need piece eight and you'll need piece nine. If you're not sewing the hood and you're just doing the high collar version, you'll need piece 10. And 11 and 12 are for the facing, as well as 13 and 14, those are also for the facing on the inside. And then piece 15 is the sleeve, and those are all the pieces that you'll need. The first thing you wanna do is interface all of your pieces that it tells you to interface. You can see I did mine. 
And I don't let anything go to waste here. I use all of my scraps and you can't tell from this side, so it doesn't really matter, but I use all of my scraps for my interfacing. And once we're done with that, we can get started on our jacket. Okay, our first step is we're gonna take the upper pockets and we're gonna stitch along the edge at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance with a long stitch all the way around the outer parts of the pocket. It's a little hard to see here because there's so much stitching, but this is the one that's going down and around. And by sewing that really long stitch all the way around, that's gonna help us with getting the corners really nice and flat. If you just tug on the back thread without breaking it, do this very gentle, it will pull it and it will help the edges lay nice and flat, especially if you're working with a bulky fabric like I am. If you have a serger, this is a good time to overlock all of the edges. I just like to do this because it's just cleaner. Okay, now we're gonna turn our pockets down on that fold line and we're gonna do right sides together. So I'm just gonna fold mine down and pin it across. And then I'm gonna stitch my pockets along the stitch line right here and then we're gonna turn it out. I'm working with a little bit of a thicker fabric, so I'm gonna trim the corners off so that it lays a little bit better when I turn it right side out. And your fabric should have this like little pocket here because we're only stitching down the sides. And then we're gonna turn this right side out. Okay, and then you can kind of see that it lines up where we made that long stitch right here. And we're just gonna fold over the rest of this and then press it down. Okay, I pinned all of my edges down on my pocket, and now I'm just gonna go press all of this flat. Okay, now we're gonna take the front piece, and it's really hard to see my notches because my marker matches my fabric, but they are there, and we are gonna match it up with the markings on our pockets. And I'm sorry if my pattern matching or lack of pattern matching bothers you. I just don't have the patience for that. And then I'm just gonna take my pins and repin it all the way around in the same place. And this keeps them nice and flat doing it this way. But if you have an easier way that makes more sense, I always recommend doing it the way that makes more sense to you. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna edge stitch the pockets all the way around. Okay, this fabric is a little camouflage, probably not the best to do a sew along with, but we have finished the pockets. We top stitched the top of these all the way around, and now we're gonna move on to the welt pockets. And if you're not comfortable doing welt pockets, another cute thing would be just to like cut an extra pair of these pockets and do them down here. That would be really cute. Um, and you can totally skip the entire welt pocket process if you'd like. If you're braving the welt pockets with me, this is what we're gonna do. I didn't interface mine because my fabric is so sturdy and bulk already, but if you're using a lighter fabric, um, like linen or 
maybe just like a single layer fabric, you'll want to interface the wrong side of this. First thing that we're gonna do is fold it in half, right sides together. And then we're gonna fold this, the shorter edges right here, we're gonna sew that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both of them. Okay, now that we have these sewn at the edges, I am just gonna trim it across and then I'm gonna clip the corner but not getting close to the stitch line. We just wanna trim this and then the corners, don't get too close to the stitch. Okay, then we're gonna turn our welt pieces right side out and press them flat. And then use something to poke out the corners so that they're nice and sharp. Okay, now we're gonna take our top and I know my, like I said, my markings are really, really hard to see because the marker matches my fabric, but I'm gonna try my best to kind of show you the big circle here and we're going to line that up with the big circle here so the raw edge should be face the side of your jacket and we are just going to place the circles there it should your the raw edge of your welt should line up with the center line that you've drawn for your welt pocket Okay, now we're gonna take our pocket piece that has these three dots on here. This one is called the lower pocket lining, and we're gonna match them with the three dots that are on our welt that we've sewn here. And we're just gonna line those up here. And to make it less confusing, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before and draw a straight line from line to line. You can use a ruler if you really want to get crazy, but you can just double check that the lines will match up here. Okay, then we're gonna take our other piece. This is the lower pocket piece four, where we have these double dots here, and we are gonna line up this top dot with the dots on our line right here. And then I am just gonna place a pin to hold it down on each side. So as we're doing this, this is the side seam of your jacket and this is the center seam on this side. So we worked on this one first and now we're working on this side. And then I'm just gonna draw another line just like I did before, straight down to our dot because we are gonna sew along this line right here. Once we push all of this away, you can see that we've sewn along the lines that we marked before. And now we're gonna cut straight down this center line, but we're gonna stop because we marked where these diamonds are. So we're gonna start at the edge of the triangle that we drew earlier, and we're gonna cut straight down the center all the way to the other diamond that we cut. Okay, once we've cut this open here, we are gonna turn our pockets to the wrong side of our fabric through here. Then we're gonna press our pocket pieces nice and flat. I like to do it from this side and kind of just like roll the fabric back with my fingers. You don't have to pin it, but this just helps me do it so that nothing is showing.
Okay, now that everything is all nice and pressed on both sides, you can see that I have the pockets pressed away from each other. And on the side with our welt, I am just going to stitch all the way down, just to edge stitch straight down right here. Okay, now that we have top stitched our welt pocket here, we are going to flip this over and we are just going to sew the pocket. We are not sewing anything with the jacket and we're going to start and sew all the way around 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we're just going to be sewing the pocket bag. Okay, I have sewn my pocket bag and I overlocked it. And now we're gonna sew over the welt. So make sure your pocket bag is pointed towards the center front of your jacket because we are gonna sew a straight stitch along our pockets right here just to hold them down on each side. Okay, now we're gonna do an edge stitch just along the very short edges of our pocket. And make sure you don't sew along this edge. This will be our pocket here. So we're just gonna edge stitch these two shorter edges. Okay, if you survive sewing this welt pocket, once we stitch, edge stitch the pockets, we are all done with pockets. These turned out so cute. I think welt pockets are just like such a cute little detail. And now we are going to move on. Okay, now we're going to take our back piece and the yoke of the back. And actually, this would be really cute if it was like contrasting. That's another idea. Anyway, we are going to line it up here making sure all of our notches match. And then we are gonna just straight stitch it 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And, and then I'm gonna overlock my raw edges. Okay, now that I have this sewn together, we are gonna press the seam up towards the neckline. Okay, it's a little hard to see my see my pattern. It almost matches up, but not quite. Anyway, so, where I've stitched it, I'm just going to go and top stitch this seam down about an eighth of an inch all the way across. I top stitched all the way across. Now we are going to attach the shoulder, the front and the back at the shoulder seams. So we are just going to sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way across the shoulders. I'll probably top stitch all of my seams down. That's completely optional. You don't have to do that. I just like the way that it looks. Okay, I just sewed the shoulder seams together and then I did a top stitch after I pressed my seam back towards the back and then I just did a top stitch just like we did on the yoke right there. Just a cute little detail, like you don't have to do that but I think it's really cute. And then now we're gonna stay stitch the neckline using a really long stitch. So whatever your stitch is, just turn it up to the highest setting. And then that's how we sew a stay stitch around the neckline. Okay, now we're gonna sew our sleeves onto the bodice. And we're gonna open this up. And this is the front here, and this is the back. Okay, and then we're gonna line up our center notch with the shoulder seam right here. And I'm using clips, cause it's gonna get a little bulky. And then we're gonna just clip it all the way around the arm seam. And then we're gonna go sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way around this. Okay, now that our sleeve is sewn, I pressed the seam towards the sleeve. And then I did that little top stitch just like I did on the other ones. And it looks so cute. Now let's sew the other sleeve. 
Okay, now we are going to fold the front over the back. Okay, then we're gonna clip the sleeves all the way down. This is gonna be one continuous stitch down the underarms, down to the large dots that we made. My markings are disappearing quicker than I can um, get to them. So I put a pin here to remind me where to stop and I'm just gonna pin this all the way around And then we're gonna sew all of this one long stitch starting at the edge of the sleeve down to our dot on our on the side five eighths of an inch seam allowance and then i'm gonna overlock it okay now that we've sewn the sleeves and the side seams of our jacket making sure that we stop at our notch here we are gonna work on the neck band so we're gonna turn our jacket right side out because we're going to pin it right sides together. So we're going to take our neck band and pin it right sides together. I would have interfaced this, but my fabric is already so thick. So there's no, really no reason for me to interface this neck band because it would just add more thickness to it. And it's already pretty sturdy. Okay, now that I have the neck band pinned, I'm gonna go sew this 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna press it flat. Okay, now that we have the collar sewn on, I am gonna start working on the facing. So we're gonna set this aside for a bit. Okay, so here we have our facing pieces, and we're gonna take our front pieces and our back, and we are gonna stitch these together at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance right across the top here. Now that I have this stitched together, I went ahead and overlocked the entire edge that's gonna be facing out. Now we're gonna take the neck band and we are gonna sew it along this with right sides together. Okay, now we're gonna go sew this 5 8 of an inch seam allowance across the neck band. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on sewing the zipper. And you may have to shorten your zipper a bit and it gives you all of the instructions here on how to do that. My zipper is actually a little too short, so I am gonna have a little bit of extra space down here at the bottom, but that's okay. So we're gonna take our zipper, our separating zipper. Well, I'm just gonna unzip it a little bit, but I like to leave it zipped so that I know um, the right sides. And I also did a little mark on the right side. Um, and then I'm just gonna take it and line it up with our notch that we have here up on the collar. And then I'm gonna place it about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. And I'm just gonna pin this all the way down And then I'm going to do the same with the other side of the zipper, right sides together. Now I'm gonna go sew my zipper down with a regular zipper foot, and then we're gonna get started on our facing. Okay, now we're gonna take our facing and we're gonna pin this right sides together, right over the zipper. So it's gonna be sandwiched in between there and we're gonna pin it all the way around the top.
Okay, now we're just gonna go sew all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, for the next step, we are going to understitch, but I really think that a top stitch is cuter for this like quilt vibe that we're going for. So I'm gonna top stitch mine all the way starting from the bottom all the way around along the collar. But if you were just gonna understitch, you would only be sewing this part all the way around as far as you could go, probably stopping here and then starting again up here and across and then back down. But I am gonna top stitch mine because I think it's just gonna go really cute with this quilted look. Okay, I finished up stitching the zipper and now we're going to work on the facing for the curved hem, which is my favorite part. Okay, now we're gonna take our facing pieces and we're gonna lay them right sides together and we're gonna sew them down to this notch right here. Okay, with right sides together, we're gonna take our facing and this is for the front piece here. And we're just going to clip it all the way around, just like we did with the top facing. And then when we get to the side seam, this is where it gets a little tricky. We're just going to pin it here up to where our notch is. And then we're going to pin it on the other side because when we're sewing this, we're going to sew up to the notch or up to the small circle. And then we're going to stop and start again on this side. So pinning it here doesn't really matter, like super close to the dots. And then we're gonna continue the rest of the way along the back. We have the facing all clipped in. We're gonna start here and we're gonna sew all the way up to our dot here. Let me mark it again so that you can see it better. So we're gonna sew all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch and we're gonna stop back stitch and then we're gonna pick up on this side where the large dot is, back stitch, sew all the way around the back and do the same thing when we come back to this side. And then we're going to finish it off just at the bottom there at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I just finished sewing the facing down along the bottom. And I'm going to show you kind of a close-up look of how I sewed this bottom part right here where the curve is. We just sewed straight up to the dot. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. And when you're going to flip it over, that should line up with the side seam of your jacket and if it doesn't line up and maybe your seam ended up here you can just sew it down to where the dot is on your coat and then I'm gonna clip the curves along here so that it lays a little bit better and probably trim off the bulk of this fabric down here that's quilted and then we're gonna turn this so that the facing is on the inside of the jacket. Okay, so I turn my facing to the wrong side and I just pinned it down and I'm gonna sew all the way around at the edge of the facing on the entire bottom of my coat and that's gonna give me a cute top stitching all the way around. I've sewn the facing down and you can see it has this stitch on the outside and I think it just looks really cute. Now all that's left to do is hem the sleeves. Okay, there are two ways to finishing the hem of the sleeve. You can roll it down about a quarter of an inch and then roll it up, maybe another half or another inch. Um, you can decide how short you need it, or you can just search along the edges and fold it up once and then sew along, and that's how I'm gonna do it.
Okay, now we're done with our jacket and we can go and enjoy it all fall and winter. I really hope that you guys love this pattern as much as I do. And if you sew this jacket, I would love, love, love to see it. So please tag me on any social media platforms at Alyssa Threads. Thank you for watching.